that you will surround and protect all of us, God, every father and mother, every husband and wife, every single person in the church, every young teenager in the name of Jesus, every child, dear Father in heaven, we truly need you to be all over us, before us, beside us, behind us, hallelujah, to lead us, to shepherd us. This morning, we bring those who are not well before you. We thank you for restoring the health of those who are not well. And, but we continue to contend in prayer for those who are not well. In the name of Jesus, we bring them before you. Bring divine healing upon their soul, upon their body. In the name of Christ, Lord, have mercy upon them this morning. In the name of Jesus, even our loved ones who are not saved, we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, you bring conviction upon their hearts, O oh God. Open their eyes that they may know you. Every backslider, we bring them to you. How to touch their heart, turn them. Open their eyes to see the deception of this material world. That this world is passing away. Only the name of Jesus, only the word of God will last forever. Lord, we pray for them. You turn them back to yourself. And this morning, every hands that are lifted up, they have needs in their life, Lord, we pray that, God, you open doors, you close doors. God, we pray that, God Almighty, that you favor your people. Bless each and every one like you did Jabez, Lord, as Jabez cry out to you. Bless me, enlarge my territory. Lead me by your hands. Let no evil come upon me, Jabez, pray. Likewise, we pray this morning as well for one another in this church. Have your way in this service. Speak by the Holy Spirit into our hearts, O Lord God. God, hallelujah, all glory and honor goes to you in Jesus' most wonderful name. We pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can then just turn around and just wave at one another. Amen. And a very good morning to all of you. And I uh, want to give you the announcement. Uh, tonight, we do have service, 6 o'clock prayer, 7 service. And uh, Wednesday, we have our midweek worship service <clears throat> and uh, at 7. And Saturday, there will be a ministerial meeting upstairs for those who are serving uh, in this church, Sunday school teachers, musicians, all of those who are serving sound people in the sound room and um, interpretation, translation, ushers and all that. So <clears throat> at four o'clock this coming Saturday, 22nd, uh, this Saturday upstairs, amen. So take note also men's, there'll be a men's meeting on the 29th, Saturday 9 a.m. in the morning in the church in PJ, uh, conducted by Pastor Allen. Uh, the title of it is called Men of Velo. So 29 men's meeting in PJ. And uh, take note, June 1st to June the 4th, um, uh, the PJ Church will be uh, resuming the Malaysian Bible Conference uh, Wednesday night to uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, 1st to 4th of uh, June, uh, main guest speaker will be Pastor Joe Campbell. So set aside your leave, amen, and attend this Bible conference. Uh, the venue of it is, we are not sure yet whether you'll be in the hotel or whether you'll be in the church, but shall uh, inform you later uh, about where um, the Bible conference uh, will be in. So <clears throat> uh, there was, uh, I come across uh, two guys in a comic strip. And um, one of the guys asked the other guy and says, why, uh, why God allows so much poverty and uh, allows so much suffering in this world? And uh, the other guy says to this guy who asked this question of why God allows so much suffering and so much poverty in this world, he says to this guy, why don't you ask God? And uh, this guy says, uh, 
Well, I'm afraid God will ask me the same question. Okay. So this morning, we want to go before God in our area of tithing, in our area of giving. And each and every one of us have uh, a responsibility of uh, uh, involved in the kingdom of God. And one of the areas that we can be directly involved is through our giving and tithing to the kingdom of God. Amen. So let's bow our heads as uh, uh, we pray. Uh, Danny, could you pray? Holy Heavenly Father, let's uh, come before you, God, with our heart. Uh, we give faithfully and cheerfully, God, and thanksgiving, Lord, our tithes and offerings, pay pleasures to you. Bless us every giver abundantly, Father, for your kingdom, for your purpose, O oh Lord. Bless us everyone here in the life, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, for everlasting love, for oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so let's turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 1, and uh, verse number 27. Children can follow uh, Aka NG upstairs for your Sunday school. Amen. Let's uh, give a hand clap to the Sunday school teachers. Amen. <laughs> and praise God. So, Philippians chapter 1. Verse 27, 28. Let's uh, read together. If you could stand to your feet. Uh, one, two, three. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come to see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of petition, but to you of salvation and that from God. Amen. Bless this service, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The content of this morning's sermon has to do with the conduct of a Christian. And uh, the title of it is called Only Let Your Conduct Be Worthy of the Gospel. Okay, we have been uh, doing a series of sermons from the book of Philippians last Sunday morning to live is Christ. So there's no blank answer to live is. The answer must be Christ. Okay? Not your mother-in-law, not your wife, not your uh, Facebook, not uh, people. The answer to live is what? Christ. It must be Christ. No blank answer. No other answer. So last Sunday was uh, in regard to to live is Christ. And I gathered from a few members. There was a powerful presence of God last Sunday morning. Okay, God visited us powerfully. And uh, anyway, the title of this sermon is Only Let Your Conduct Be Worthy of the gospel. Now the word meaning of this word conduct is the word, the manner in which a person behaves, especially in a particular place or in a particular situation, both before others or also, but also when he or she is alone. How many of you know we are never alone? Even if you are alone, 
okay? The thing about being alone or in a place whereby we thought no one is watching us is in real fact, uh, we are never alone. Jesus told a story about a man being forgiven of all his debts. And when he came to his turn to return that forgiveness to those who own him, okay, he would not forgive. In fact, he held on to this man uh, and then he put this man in prison. He thrown into him in prison. And the scripture says, when the other servants saw what had happened, okay, he was forgiven of all his debts. He was supposed to be, uh, his wife's and child supposed to be sold off to pay off his debts. But the person forgives him and had compassion on him, let him go. But he, he would not forgive those whom uh, owns him. Instead, thrown the guy in jail and all the while someone was watching him do that. And that someone reported him to this man who forgave him and uh, this man was thrown in jail. Moses killed an Egyptian, hit him in the sand, thinking no one saw what he did. And the next day, when he saw two Hebrews brothers fighting, he said to them, you know what, uh, uh, he said to the man who did wrong, you know, uh, why are you doing this? And this man says to Moses, who make you a prince and a judge over us? Intend thou to kill me as thou killed the Egyptian? Okay. Moses earlier did something and he thought no one saw what he did. And when he approached the person who, who is doing, the, doing something wrong, that person said, hey, who made you a judge? You killed somebody, you know, and now you're trying to tell us how to live our life. And the Bible says, Moses feared and surely said, surely this thing is known. Now for this word conduct, or the words, the manner in which a person behaves, the King James Bible instead uses the word conversation, which appear 18 times in the New Testament. The Greek word for this word conversation, okay, is the word poeio om ehi, in which this word means the behavior or behavior as a citizen, okay the behavior of a citizen. It would then sound like this, only let your behavior as a citizen be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Which is to say, let your behavior as a citizen of heaven be worthy. Upon becoming born again through faith and repentance, our citizenship changes. And it changed from being a Malaysian or Indian, a Britishian, to become a citizen of heaven. So with that in mind, what that means when the word conversation or conduct is used, po e yom om ehi, it would read like this, only let your behavior as a citizen of heaven be worthy of the gospel. Worthy is to say equal in value to the sacrifice that was made for you. The gospel events all came with a price. It was not costless, neither was it free, but it comes with a costly price. It caused separation between father and son. It caused a turning away, father, father, why have you forsaken me? It caused a crown of thorns. It caused 39 stripes to the back of his son. 
it caused a loving father to allow his only sinless son to bear the guilt of sinful men. Only let your behavior as a citizen of heaven be worthy this morning was his plea to the church of Philippi. And likewise, if you ask me, Pastor, what can I do in order to be worthy of Christ? I would likewise say to you, only let your conduct, your conversation, behavior as a citizen of heaven be worthy of what God did for you through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to consider with you all a one-point message. But it still has a three-point message in that one point this morning. And that is, I would like to consider with you first the need to conduct ourselves worthily. In the book of Luke chapter 21, 36, Jesus, after having answered the disciples' question about the end of times, whereby one of the signs he spoke about has to do with the shaking of heavens. The second heaven, which is about the atmosphere. It could be speaking about the weather patterns. And weather patterns has changed much these days. Okay? And upon men seeing this happening, Jesus says in Luke 21, men's heart shall fail for fear. But anyway, in that speaking about the signs of the last days, he taught them to pray a prayer. And that is a prayer of worthiness. In verse 36, Luke 21, Watch you therefore and pray always that you be or you may be accounted worthy. Worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. To be accounted worthy is to conduct yourself worthily. One cannot say to be worthy if one does not behave as a citizen of heaven or conduct oneself worthily. But anyway, the reason why that is so and the reason why that is needed is so that you might escape. You might escape all these things. And in that escape, is where you get to stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, this morning. The word snare is a common word used in the Bible. And to be very specific, when you read the word snare, it speaks, it has another three words there, namely the snare of the devil. If God were to grant to you and I to see into the invisible. You will see Satan going about with a snare trap. Okay. He has a snare trap. He, go, he goes about, he will try to lay a snare trap. Okay. I think many of us men, okay, when we were young, maybe some of you uh, women as well, you were young, you snare birds, right? I've snared birds before. And we built that little uh, deception there. We built that. We used sticks. We used thread. We begin to set it up, you know. And uh, that trap is able to, when we pull, the, uh, we pull the rope, the thing will close on the bird that has gone into the trap. And what we do is that we begin to lay down food. Okay? From this side, we'll put some uh, rice onto it. And then the trap will be there, and this bird will eat, 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 and goes into that uh, box-like trap, pull, or there's a trigger there that when it steps into it, boom, that bird is snare. Okay. And if God would have grant you to see what the devil is doing, you will see him going about setting a snare trap to trap people into bondage. There are those who shall stand before the Son of Man worthily 
having run the race and finished the race. There are those who will stand before the Son of Man worthily, having fought the good fight and fought it true. There were those who shall stand before the Son of Man worthily, having kept the faith, having persevered, and never giving up their faith, despite the trials, despite the, despite the difficulties that they go through, arrows shooting at them, but in spite of all those arrows, they still continue on with Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus. But also there shall be those who shall stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, worthily, is because they managed to escape. Okay? The word escape there is the word if you go, which the word if you go means to flee away from danger to safety. In the very first book, or in the very beginning of time, uh, this was and is one of the uh, word or the advice or the call from God on how to become accounted as worthy. To stand before Jesus Christ the judge. If you go, Genesis 19 verse 15, it speaks about the time when God is about to rain judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says in verse 15, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man lay hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Verse 17, And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. His angels begin to say to the Lord, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither say, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape one more time to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And though one can be escaping from the trap that was laid for him, but in truth, he's escaping the judgment of God. Okay. Lord's family, God is going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord's family was actually escaping from the judgment of God. God on that day is judging Sodom and Gomorrah for their sins. Romans chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemn thyself. For thou that judge does the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do, judge, do such things, and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Last few words is escape the judgment of God and to conduct ourselves worthily. Okay? It's how you're going to escape. How you and I are going to escape the judgment of God and to conduct ourselves worthily so that we escape the judgment of God. I'm going to look at three important areas that we need to conduct ourselves. The first is to conduct ourselves wisely. Second is to conduct ourselves uh, fearfully. There's fearing in the fear of God. And the third is to conduct ourselves contentedly. So I'm going to look at conducting ourselves worthily first by conducting ourselves wisely. And in this, we can take the example of the wise man who follow the stars that lead them to Jesus Christ. That is, 
they conduct themselves wisely by taking heed to the warning that was given to them seriously. Their trueness as one who is called wise. Okay, these were wise men. And their trueness of one who is wise is when God gave them a warning in a dream. They took that warning seriously. Okay? And that is true wisdom, to take warning seriously. Is that when they were warned by God in a dream, not to go back to King Herod. Because King Herod told them, if you found, if you manage to find this king of kings, this savior of the world, let me know. Okay? Let me know. Inform me. After they have found Jesus Christ, they had a dream. And then that dream that was in Matthew chapter 2, 12, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another road, by another path. Conducting yourself wisely is to take God's warning seriously like these wise men did and like every man in the Bible who took God's warning seriously. They did not report back to the king what the king has asked of them to do when they found Jesus but instead took heed to the warning of God to them not to. Now, though the numbers of warning compared to the numbers of promises are not many compared with the promises of 1,800 promises in the Bible, but each warning given nevertheless has its value and needed to be taken seriously like these wise men in which here is a problem, okay, in which here is a problem of many Christians, and that is many of God's people take not God's warning seriously. If we fail to take God's warning seriously, we shall end up not conducting ourselves worthily. For example, the warning from Jesus about careless and useless words coming out from our mouth in Matthew 12, 36 to 37. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. For thy words, for by thy words, or for by thy idle words, Thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. We talk, 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 talk. We gossip, 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 gossip. We prejudge, 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 without knowing the facts. We assume, we assume, we assume. Instead of holding our tongue, instead of praying, okay, we think nothing wrong to it all. But all the while, we are digging our own grave. We are digging ourselves nearer to hell instead to heaven. All the while, thinking that we are heading to heaven. Whereas in truth, we are actually going to hell. Okay. I know no one that we do not take seriously in the, is in the area of the warning of abstaining from all appearance of evil. As mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5, esteem from all appearance of evil. We think it nothing wrong okay, to watch things that comes up from the, from the one-eye monster from the, from the movies. We think it nothing wrong when uh, we were young disciples and my wife and I, we 
very young, you know. And one day we went to uh, Sungai Wang. There was this theater that was in Sungai Wang. We went in to the theater to watch a movie. It was a comedy, okay, Chinese comedy. But halfway through the movie, both of us were very grief. Because in that movie, they were mocking Christianity. They were making fun of the cross. The cross is a joke. Okay? From that day onwards, we say, we'll never step into a cinema. Okay? The scripture says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? It is when we, and there are many more things in the Bible that God has warned us about. But many times we don't take it seriously. Okay? It is when we take heed to God's warning. It's when we are conducting ourselves wisely. And then in conducting ourselves wisely, we stand worthily before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the judge, when the time comes this morning. Secondly, is when we conduct ourselves fearfully. That is in the fear of God, that is when we conduct ourselves worthily. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, if you call on the Father, who without respect of person, judge according to every man's work, pass the time or conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile or past the time of your sojourning or your traveling or your transit time here on earth as a citizen of heaven in fear. Allow me to give you some of the examples of those who walk in such a fear. Joseph was a man who have a fear of God. He shows it by refusing to sleep with his master's wife, Eureka. Okay, you and I know the story in Genesis 39, okay, whereby Potipiah's wife lusted after Joseph. And every day, he tries to get Joseph to sleep with her. Okay. One day when the master is away, Pull Joseph in. Lie with me, he says to Joseph. And Joseph says, no one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you. Because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Joseph walked in the fear of God. He conducted himself in the fear of God and he conducted himself worthily. David feared God by not touching God's anointed king Saul. There was an opportunity for him to put, take out his sword and just stab King Saul and his uh, 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 running, his years of running okay, from this man who is jealous, who is full of the flesh, who is running after him and he has just the, 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 the opportunity to just put the sword in and, and end it all. In fact, those who are surrounding him, do it, do it, kill this man and, and, and your misery will all end. But he says, I cannot do it. I feel God. This, this man is anointed by God and I'm not going to touch him. Okay? I'm not going to injure him. I'm not going to speak bad about him. I'm not going to you know, do any, any harm against him. Okay? There was Noah. Noah walked in the fear of God by not associating himself with the sin of the countrymen during that time. Daniel would not defile himself with the food of the king's table. The Hebrew boys fear God by not bowing to any idols. Conducting yourself worthily. 
okay, is conducting yourself in the fear of God. And lastly, when we, it is when we conduct ourselves contently. We conduct ourselves worthily. I would like you to turn to Hebrews 13. Verse 4 and verse 5. Marriage is honorable among all. And the bait undefiled. Okay. That bait is you and your wife. You and your wife. Your wife and you. No other third person must be in that bait. And if there's any third person, the bait become defiled. That bait become an unclean bait. And the scripture says, fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. God will definitely judge a defiled bait. If a woman did it, if a man did it, God will judge. Verse 5, let your conduct be without greediness, covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Be satisfied with what you have. Okay? For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He speaks about conducting ourselves contently. Okay. Contently. About being satisfied with what we already have. With God, with what God has already given to us. And when we conduct ourselves contently, we are conducting ourselves worthily before God as a citizen of heaven. You are, we are a citizen of heaven. You look at your neighbors and say, you are a citizen of heaven. Continue to look, okay? I haven't finished you. Therefore, conduct yourself wisely, fearfully, contently, because by doing so, you will conduct yourself worthily. I want everyone to stand to your feet. And uh, it's been a long time we get around the altar. The altar is a place whereby we find that in the Bible, God's people used to go to. It's a place whereby they can go before God and lay down their heart to Him. A place whereby they can go before God and talk to God one to one. Or maybe a place whereby you can ask God for help. We're living in, as Timothy said, perilous times. The second heaven is yesterday's news, all of a Sunday, all of a Southern in, in Tongo, prom, a volcano just explode out of the middle of just prom, tsunami. But there are a lot of things happening in the second heaven. And those things are causing man's heart to fail, to fear. Jesus says, watch and pray that you and I be worthy to escape all the things that are coming to pass and stand before the judge. When we stand before Jesus, we'll be standing before him as a judge. Now we are standing before him or we are before him as a savior, full of grace, full of mercy. While we still have breath, I was, how many read about Sabagat Singh? The footballer, Shabby. I 
And I read in the morning, he, he, 61 years old, a cyclist for seven years just dropped dead while cycling. I went, I was at the pharmacies buying something and I asked the pharmacist, hey, how come uh, this man, uh, he is uh, seven years cycling, no? I mean, he, I mean, such an active sportsman, play for our country, 61, cycling, full gear. There's a picture that came out. He was in full gear cycling with his cycling bike on the floor. Just dropped dead all of a sudden. Wow. Whew. My wife was saying, hey, even fit people also can, <laughs> can just die like that. Like, you? Even you're so fit also, you can just boom. Go. Wow. And this morning, it's important that you conduct yourself. Amen. I want to open the altars. I want Kerichi to come and find a place to kneel down. It's a good place to come. Okay, don't worry about anything. God will protect us. Come and kneel down at the altar. Talk to God. Hallelujah. Oops, oops, oops. Go. Oh, go. You've grown taller already, I think. Go. Oh, you can kneel down where you are also. Hallelujah. Talk to God. Talk to him about your struggles. Maybe you're struggling. Talk to him about your 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 problems, your work, or maybe your your marriage. Talk to him about your job. Talk to him about your life. Talk to him about the temptation you face, the fear you face. He's here. He wants to move. He wants to help you. He wants to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus. Help us all. To be worthy of you, Lord. Sharababa Siki and Hallelujah. We talk to God. Handa Have mercy on us, O Lord. Ah, strengthen us all, Lord. Oh, yes, in our inner man. Lord, Rabba, Baba, help us to live before you, O Lord. God, soberly, Lord. Shara, Baba, 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 Father in heaven, I ask you through your Holy Spirit to strengthen me in my inner man. That my life 
on earth as a citizen of heaven will bear forth godly fruits, will bear forth fruitful, goodly fruits. In the name of Jesus, this morning, fill us with the love of Christ that we may understand the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the love of Christ and that we may know the fullness of God. Father in heaven, give us spiritual wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are. And also, Father in heaven, like Jesus prayed in John 17, sanctify us, sanctify me with your word. Keep me away from the snare of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. And uh, go in the joy of the Lord. Consider yourself dismissed. Amen.